Hello, I'm Stefan Graeber. I'm the project leader for Lexly. And today I'd like to go over CloudInit and what it does and how it can be used with Lexly. So CloudInit is a, is a tool uh, that's also made by Canonical, which allows for customizing cloud instances of really any Linux system that has it installed. The way that normally works is um, some metadata is provided either through the cloud platform or um, through something like a configuration drive um, or even a local web server. That configuration, which most commonly um, is a YAML document, can then instruct CloudInit to do things like creating users, uh, installing packages, adding services, um, running some some commands, doing very like a very wide variety of um, configuration steps on the system. Those are meant to be run just once on the initial startup of the instance, and then Cadinet doesn't run again after that. It's supported on a wide variety of operating systems and Linux distributions, and it's quite commonly used um, in public cloud to customize uh, someone's instance. So you take the normal pristine image as published by the distribution, and then your Cadinet metadata will install all of the packages and services that you need to actually run your workload. The way this usually works, um, so that's the, the cabinet documentation here. Um, it kind of looks like this. So this is those are some example of the YAML configuration for for Cladinet, uh, which supports creating files, adding repository uh, in this case through YAM, adding some trusted certificates, uh, modifying resolve information, running sh uh, chef recipes, running puppet, uh, adding more app repositories. It supports a lot of stuff. And the documentation kind of goes over every single module that they have uh, and what kind of configuration each of those can take. And if none of those do what you want, there's always the option of running effectively a straight shell script uh, to do whatever else you want. Now, this is quite widely used in public clouds. It can also be used on platforms like VMware um, or like pretty much a new Ubuntu or other, other server installations that include CloudInit, either by directly pointing at a configuration file or passing a configuration drive or a variety of other ways to feed data to CloudInit. Now, looking at LexD, um, on the LexD side of things, we've got effectively three um, options to pass data to CloudInit. One is uh, user data, one is vendor data, and the third one is network config. User data and vendor data uh, let you pass what you're looking at right now, the normal CloudInit um, configuration data. And the difference between user data and vendor data is that user data overrides whatever is in vendor data. So that kind of gets you like a, two different levels of configuration that can be used. and for um, within LexD, quite often what you would do is put um, common configuration that you want applied to every single instance inside vendor data within a profile, and then use user data for instance-specific configuration information. Now, the third one is network config, and that allows passing a um, network configuration information through, through uh, Cladinet. Uh, specifically the v2 format, if I can find it in there, network config v2, there you go, um, where you can define all of the network interfaces with uh, want some bridges to be defined, VLANs, um, tunnels, just about anything else. It effectively uses the um, net plan that uh, Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu uses as its configuration manager for, for network. And you end up with policies that can look kind of like this, where you can define a number of interfaces, um, have them detected by their MAC address or something else, configure IP addresses, gateways, additional routes, DNS configuration, even in this case, bond and bridges and VLANs. Uh, so that's quite flexible. Um, not every single LexD image supports CloudInit. Uh, Cladinet requires a whole bunch of Python packages to be installed and then Cladinet itself. So not all images will include it. 
The official Ubuntu images, as can be found on the Ubuntu and Ubuntu Daily remotes in NextD, all support Cladinit for both instance uh, for containers and virtual machines. On the community image server, when looking at the image list, uh, you'll notice that there is a variant column here, and some of them is the cloud. So all of the cloud variants include Cladinit, and that uh, all in all covers around 16 distros that have uh, Cladinit enabled images. But some of them won't, and in some cases that can make images quite a bit quite a bit larger. So if you think of something like Alpine Linux, that might be around five megs or something like that usually. Uh, once you add all of Python and the bits needed for Cladinit, it can easily be, uh, I believe, uh, at least 20 or 30 megs. So it, it can get quite a bit larger, but it does get you the flexibility of then being able to manage that just like anything else. And that's that's effectively it for a quick intro to Cladinit. So now let's go take a look at how all of that stuff works in practice. All right, so I'm on my local system. I just created an empty project, uh, so I've got nothing in there. There's currently nothing special with the default profile. It just says it's a default profile for the demo project, and there's no config in there. The first thing I'll do is actually put a bit of configuration in um, that default profile. So that will apply to every single instance that's being started from this point on, um, which supports Cladinit. So the config I'm going to put in place here is a vendor data uh, config. Um, and that's going to be using cloud-config with the key called apt mirror. And the mirror is US archive ubuntu com slash ubuntu. So what that does is that now it puts into vendor data that I want, for instance, to use us.cloud.ubuntu.com as their um, package mirror instead of using the default one, which is based in the UK. So with that in place, uh, now I can just launch. Let's do a container first. So C1, and here we go. And let's do a virtual machine as well. And if I enter C1, I can run cloud init status because it's currently running, so it's currently reconfiguring things. So a little while, it marks as done. And if I run apt update now, we can see that it's downloading from US archive to Bintu.com. And looking at the VM, it's similarly done. It also uses US archive. So that's the most basic. There's just one tiny bit of config that's applied to everything that uses that profile. Um, so I'm just going to be deleting both of them. As a reminder, Cladnet is really meant for initialization. So you're not going to be able to just reboot the VM or the container and have that config reapply. That's not how that works. Um, Cladnet does get re-triggered if you copy one instance into another one. So if effectively, if I was to copy C1 into C2, that will cause Cladinit to re-trigger because the name is different and the config will be passed again. Um, but in general, it's really meant to be a one-time a one -time thing that happens on boot. All right, so for the most com more complex case, what I'm going to be doing is using init instead of launch. So that creates the instance but does not start it, which then gets us a chance to modify its config before it's first actually booted. Uh, so again, 2004 cloud. And again, we'll do both container and VM. So starting with the container, I did the config. And this time I'm going to be setting user data. Again, as cloud config. And the data I want to put in there is going to be, so we're going to be modifying the users list. I still want the default account, so that's effectively to create the Ubuntu account, but also I want a new account called demo to also be added to that. And let's also install a package, so I'm going to be installing SL. Okay, so that's for the user data. Now let's also mess with the network a bit, so I'm going to be adding a network config. Actually, 
need to do that for YAML to be happy. Uh, and same thing here. Um, so use network config, I'm gonna want, I need to specify what version of that config it is. Uh, we're using version two. So that's the net plan based one. Then Ethernet devices, if zero, uh, I'm gonna want it to do DHCP. That's what it normally does by default, but as soon as you go and modify it, you need to actually uh, explicitly set it. And I'm gonna want a additional address to be added. So I'm gonna go with this address. So that should do DHCP for the main address, but then add an additional address on top of it. Okay, that's done, let's start it up. So I can get the status, it's still running. Give it a few more seconds. Uh, this time it actually needs to reconfigure the package list, uh, the, the package sources, update the package list, install the package I told it to install, create that extra user and configure uh, the network a bit differently. So it takes a little while. All right, so let's look at what it did. Uh, it starts with the network config. So that's what is applied. So here we can see the custom address that was added. It's good. Uh, looking at the list of repositories, you can see it used US archive at Ubuntu.com. So that vendor data setting was retained. Uh, let's look for SL. So that's installed and seems to be working just fine. And lastly, let's look at the accounts. So I told it to keep the default, so Ubuntu should still exist. There should also be a new user called demo. And that's it, everything's applied now to that container. Uh, let's go look at its config and go ahead and copy paste that straight into the VM. I'm just doing a couple of tiny changes. So in the case of the VM, I'm gonna want the address to be slightly different. So let's do 201. And it's not ETH0 in the VM, it's ENP5 is zero. So I just need to change that. Save and then start the VM. And now the exact same config is gonna get applied. It's a virtual machine, so it takes a bit longer to boot and to then get the config and apply it. Uh, but in the next few seconds, the VM should be booted and should start running Catinet for us. So let's go see. So Catinet is currently running. Maybe if we look at the process list, we can tell what it's doing. Not very easily. So I can see that it's still running, but it's not really clear what it's doing, and that's done. All right, so let's look at the addresses. So I do have my 201 address and I can go and ping the 201 that's in the container. That all works fine. Let's look for the game. It's here. So that works as expected. And then just need to check the package list. It's using US archive, so that's all good. And lastly, the users. So Ubuntu, whoops, typo, Ubuntu, and demo. So this, this works exactly the same way. Um, whether you're using virtual machines or containers, you just need to keep in mind that things like network device names can differ, but other than that, you get the exact same features. And that's mostly it for Cladinet on, on NextD. Uh, there's also a page in the NextD documentation which goes over some more of the networking bits and then some of the details on exactly how all of that stuff works. Um, but by and large, you can just set user data and vendor data to anything you can find inside the Cladinet documentation. Uh, going through their examples uh, is a good way, good way to start because it really covers a lot of things. And this makes it a very, very convenient way to like, prepare your environment, um, whether it's just putting some command configuration in every single instance you deploy on your laptop, or whether it's actually deploying your entire workload that way. Um, it's really up to you. Cadinet is there and has all of that, uh, all of that flexibility. And the fact that vendor data and user data are separate makes it really easy to separate what applies to your entire environment from what applies to specific instances with Flexity.
And that's it. I hope this was useful, that you learned uh, more about Cladinet and how that can be used with FlexD, and that this may be useful for your environment. If you've got questions, you um, can leave them in the comment section below, or go on our community forum and ask there. Uh, I'm going to be leaving a bunch of links to the Cladinet documentation, including all of those examples here. Um, as well as the Lexi documentation and the list of the images that supports it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.